Hi, everyone from Motion VFX. In this lesson, we will see how to add subtitles to your edit in DaVinci Resolve. I will use my audio sync project with George, and I would like to add subtitles to the introduction. Let's play the video. Hello, my name is George Edmondson on MotionVFX.com. Today, Erwin is going to show you how to sync audio in DaVinci Resolve. All right, let's get started. There are two ways to add subtitles to your project. First, you can open the FX tab. In the toolbox, select the Titles folder, and inside you will find the subtitle preset. You just have to drag and drop it inside your project, and it will automatically create a subtitle track where you will have your subtitle. On this track, you won't be able to add other titles from DaVinci Resolve or titles from Motion VFX, for example. Only the subtitle preset could be placed inside this track. I will remove them and remove this track to show you the second method to add subtitle. This second method is really simple and faster. Just do a right click on the left part of the timeline and select Add Subtitle Track. Next, you just have to do a right click again and select Add Subtitle. You will get a subtitle element with a default duration, which is 3 seconds. Then, you can adjust the duration by trimming the in and out point like any titles or video clips. To edit the subtitle, select it and open the inspector. Inside the inspector, you will have two tabs for the subtitle element, Caption and Style. In the Captions tab, you will be able to edit your subtitle. And in the Style tab, you will define the look and the position of the subtitle. First, in the Caption tab, you will find the in and out time code. Then, you will be able to type your text. And we can play it to see if it is correct. Hello, my name is George Edmondson on MotionVFX.com. Today, Erwin is... Below, you will find the index list, where you will find all the subtitles with the timecode information and the text. Before adding a second subtitle, let's modify the style, as the position should be a little bit lower. In the style, you can define which font you want, change the color, the size, and with the stroke parameter, you can add outline. With the transform parameters, you can modify the position, the size, and the opacity. To be sure to place the subtitle at the right position, in order to be readable on every screen, I will use the safe areas. To display them, I will go to the view menu, I will select the safe area, and click on On. It will display the limit of the main frame, the action area, and the inner rectangle will be the title area. So to be sure that your subtitle will be readable on every screen, be sure to be inside this rectangle. I will modify the Y parameter to position the subtitle at the limit of the title safe area. The subtitle is white. Depending on the background video, if there is some white like on the left part, the subtitle could be not enough readable. There are many solutions to resolve this. First, you can add a black outline with a stroke parameter, or you can add a drop shadow with a blurry shadow, or you can also add a background layer. Of course, you can customize the background layer with the color or the outline, but what is really nice with the background layer is the fact that it will adapt automatically to the length of the title. For example, if I remove some words, you will see that the background layer will be also shorter. You can see that the border of the background layer is really close of the first and the last letter. If you want to add more space, here a tip. Just add the space at the beginning and at the end of your sentence. So now I've got more space on the left and the right side. There is also the option Override Sizing, which gives you the possibility to define exactly the size of the background layer. The only drawback is the fact that the size will be the same for all the subtitles. It won't adapt to the length of the title. To add a second subtitle, you can click on the Add New button. Be very careful. As you can see, DaVinci Resolve will look at the position of your playhead to add the new subtitle. So I will undo by pressing Command plus Z. I will position the playhead just after the subtitle and click on the Add New button. I will play the clip to adjust the end of the subtitle. Today, Erwin is going to show you how to sync audio in DaVinci Resolve. I will play it again to remember what are the exact words. Today, Erwin is going to show you how to sync audio in DaVinci Resolve. As it is a long sentence, I will use two lines by pressing Enter. 
so we can see that the subtitle is out of the title safe area. So I will have to adjust the Y position again. The cool thing is I won't have to do it for all the two line subtitles. As I've got the use track style option checked, it means that all the subtitles will get this modification. The first subtitle will be also modified, just a little bit higher. I will add some space on the left and on the right, but I will also change the alignment in order to center the two lines. Okay, perfect. Let's add the last subtitle for this introduction. All right, let's get All right, let's get started. I will adjust the duration and modify the text. And we are good. Hello, my name is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com. Today, Erwin is gonna show you how to sync audio in DaVinci Resolve. All right, let's get started. If we look at the caption tab, there are some informations that can help us to get a good timing for the subtitles. First, with the previous and next buttons, you can easily switch between subtitles, or you can also click directly on one specific subtitles to select it. For each title, you can see the number of characters used. This information is very useful as it will define how long your sentence is. And below you can find the CPS value. CPS stands for character per second. CPS is compute with the number of characters and the duration of the subtitle. Bigger the CPS value is, faster the viewer will have to read the subtitle. It is why DaVinci Resolve has a default limit value for the CPS. This limit is 30. Over 30, it will be more difficult for the viewer to read everything with the amount of time. For example, if I double the number of characters of these subtitles by doing a copy-paste, you can see that the CPS value is read now. DaVinci Resolve tells us that the timing to read the subtitle is too short. There are two solutions, reducing the number of characters or increasing the duration of the subtitle to reduce the CPS value. Of course, you can modify this default value inside the project settings. Click on Subtitles. Inside, you will be able to adjust the number of the maximum characters per line, the default duration of the subtitle, and the maximum character per second. One important tip, as you may have to do some last-minute editing after adding your subtitles. Your client may want to add or remove some parts or modify the order of the shots. For example, if we move the clip, we can see that the subtitles by default won't follow your clip, so the subtitles will be out of sync. To resolve this, just select all your elements in the timeline and do a right click. Select Link Clips. Now, if we move the clip, everything will follow. Next, let's see how to add a second subtitle track for a second language. In fact, it's quite simple, as you just have to do a right click and select Add Subtitle Track like we did before. So now we have two subtitle tracks, ST1 and ST2. I will rename them. The first one will be English and the second one French. To avoid to display multiple subtitles at the same time, you can display only one subtitle track at a time. The eye icon will tell you which subtitle track is active. As the English track is OK, I don't want to modify it by mistake, so I will click on the lock icon to be sure that I won't modify anything. Perfect, I will quickly add French subtitles. OK, so we can switch from the French version to English version at any time. I will check if the CPS value is OK for each subtitle. As French use more characters, we can see that the last one is in red, just over the limit with 31 characters per second. As I can't remove words, I will increase the length of the subtitle just a little bit, and we are good with a 27 value. I will check one more time if everything is in sync. All right, let's get started. Perfect, so now we need to export the subtitles. There are many ways to export subtitles in DaVinci Resolve. The first one, if you need to export only the subtitles and not the video. For example, you need to send them to the translator by email to check if everything is OK. You just have to go to the File menu, select Export and choose Subtitle. Automatically, the name of the file will be the name of the track. And we can see that the default file format is SRT. I will click on Save. To export the French version, just click on the eye icon to activate the track. You have three options for the export format, SRT, SRT without formatting, and VTT file format. 
SRT are text files, so you can open it inside any text editors on any platforms. As you can see, it is a simple hierarchy with a number of the subtitle, the time code information, and the content of the subtitle. The second way to export your subtitle is with a video track. You will need to go to the deliver page. In the deliver page, you will have all the parameters for the video and audio export. And at the bottom of the list, you will find the subtitle settings. First, enable the export subtitle parameter. Then, you will have three various ways to export your subtitle. The first one is as a separate file, meaning you will have one video file and one or many subtitle files. You can need this for online services like YouTube, for example. You can export which format is the best for your workflow, so don't hesitate to contact your client or look at the specifications of the services you will use to get the right format. Here, I will select SRT and I will select both language, English and French, so I won't have to do it twice. Then I click on Add to Render Queue and click on Render. So in my Render folder, I can find my video file and the two subtitles. The second option is Burn into Video. It means that the subtitle will be composite over your video and be part of the video file so it won't be possible to get the two languages at the same time. You will have only the one which is activated inside the timeline. I will render it. The good side is the fact that the subtitle will be visible on any softwares or streaming platforms, with or without closed captions options. The third option is as embedded captions. This option can be used by broadcasters with format like MXF, for example. The subtitle will be integrated inside the video metadata. It works also with other formats like H.264. There are two options for the codec to use. Again, don't hesitate to call your client to be sure which option you have to select. I will select text and render it. Here, I've got only one file. But if I open it inside the VLC player, for example, I can go to the subtitle menu and ask VLC to display the subtitle. As you can see with this export, you don't have the text style format from DaVinci Resolve. But what is great is the fact that the viewer can choose the size, the colors, the opacity directly inside the player. To conclude, one last information. DaVinci Resolve can export subtitles, but you can also import subtitles from translators, for example, or online services that automatically generate subtitles using AI. To import subtitles, you just have to go to the File menu, select Import, and click on Subtitle. DaVinci Resolve can only import SRT files, so I will use the one I've just exported. Once imported, you will find it inside the media pool, and you just have to drag and drop it over your edit in the subtitle track. And we are good. To learn more about DaVinci Resolve, don't hesitate to check out our DaVinci Resolve Academy playlist on our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Ciao, ciao. Bye bye.